Last year I made a video about going back to normal after you quit smoking. And I made a point of saying, you know, normal is not what it was, you know, a few weeks earlier when you were a smoker, you know, in contrast to where you are a couple of weeks after you quit smoking. Normal is what you would have been like if you'd never taken up smoking with aging thrown in. And it's hard to determine what normal is for people until they quit smoking. And where this has implications is like sleep patterns will go back to what is normal for you. But again, that may not be what you were when you were a smoker. It would have been what you were before you ever took up smoking, which may have been decades earlier, again, with an aging variable in there. In that video, I talked about some specific issues being like having to eat meals differently, where you couldn't skip meals where you did before. And I talked about medications. But one thing I forgot to talk about, which is important, and this video is going to concentrate on that, is caffeine. Caffeine is uh, is a drug. And as I talked about that with other drugs, you know, I talked about it with sometimes with antidepressant drugs or with thyroid drugs, how those can be adjusted and need different dosages for people who are being treated by by them. Well, with caffeine, this is a drug that people are taking, in a sense, on their own. And they're used to a normal level when they were smoking. And then they try to do the same pattern after they quit, thinking like, you know, this is what they always did. In fact, some people try to increase caffeine because they were looking for the stimulant effect. But even without that occurring, if you were to drink the same quantity of caffeine that you did as a smoker after you quit, you may find you can get some pretty adverse effects from that caffeine. I talk about this when I talk about alcohol and smoking. I make a point of explaining to people why they smoke more when they drink. It's because alcohol causes people to lose nicotine. It does this through a urine acidification process that makes nicotine leave the bloodstream. There's a similar reaction with nicotine and caffeine. Similar with one big difference. Alcohol makes you lose nicotine. You have to smoke more. Nicotine interferes with the absorption and ability to utilize caffeine. And what the implication of that is, is if you drink the exact same amount of caffeine after you quit smoking that you did beforehand, you may find that you are getting a much larger dose of caffeine that becomes available for your body and works on your body and, in a sense, becomes a major stimulant on your body. You drink the same amount, you may double your dosage and, in that process, get the effects of having too much caffeine. And you don't understand what's happening. You'll often write that off as, oh, you know, I'm much more edgy now that I quit smoking. You know, I'm doing everything the way I did before, and gee, I'm, I'm, I'm edgy, I'm irritable, I can't sleep well. One of the first things I suggest to people, if they are feeling those kind of symptoms, after the first few days, the first few days are hard to predict because withdrawal is going on, and you could have those symptoms from withdrawal. But if it's going longer than three days, and you are getting these kind of wired feeling effects, the first thing to look at is your caffeine consumption. And it's not saying you've got to get rid of caffeine altogether, but you may need to bring your dosage down. You may have to bring it down as much as half of what it was before to, again, get the same dose of what you were administering before. So this is just a general, you know, word of warning about caffeine. If you're taking it the way you were before and it's not causing any problems, okay, that, that's fine. But if you are feeling effects of being wired and being edgy and being irritable, one of the first things you need to look at is your caffeine consumption. Bring it down and see if it rectifies the symptoms. If it does, yeah, caffeine was the cause of the issue. And you need to just, again, bring it down to, again, a level that's normal for you. But normal for you, for who you are now. The real you, the real normal, you know, without having a constant influence of nicotine in your system. It takes a while for some people to figure out, again, what normal is for all these different variables. But you, you just follow the symptoms when they occur. Try to see, you know, if there's something that's changed. And again, this may be, what, as I talked about in the other video, adjusting your dietary pattern. You may need to eat extra meals. doesn't mean eating extra food. It means breaking meals apart and eating the food at those, you know, interval time periods. But once you do have yourself normalized, you'll find you're going to be on a, a traje trajectory for a much healthier, a much calmer, a much more even keel existence that you'll be able to keep for the rest of your life. 
as long as you continue to stick to your personal commitment to never take another puff.